His countless hits and great live shows never would have happened if it wasn't for an Indianapolis hospital and one brave doctor. Up next, the incredible surgery John Mellencamp never knew he had and how he just paid it all back. You're watching CBS This Morning, Saturday. John Mellencamp, of course, performing in Indianapolis this week on the final stop of his U.S. tour. The gig on Tuesday wasn't just the end of a long year on the road. It was also the end of an emotional journey and the fulfillment of a promise. Proceeds from the show went to the Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis. It was a way for the singer to pay back for the surgery that saved his life nearly 64 years ago. Troubled Man is the lead single of John Mellencamp's latest album. His troubles started right at birth. I am a man. But for most of his 63 years, the singer knew little about the surgery he had as a newborn. I didn't even know I had the operation until some kid, I was about nine or ten, said, what's that big scar on the back of your neck? Mm -hmm. And I went home and I asked my parents, they said, oh, don't worry about it. You had an operation when you were born. Last fall, at the Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis, Mellencamp finally met 97-year-old Dr. Robert Heimberger, the neurosurgeon who performed the life-saving operation in 1951. He remembered it because I was the first one they'd ever done. Spina bifida is a birth defect that causes an opening of the spinal column that can sometimes allow the spinal cord to grow or extend outside of the body. The hospital still has the records of Mellencamp's surgery. This is the back of your head. Yeah, there's the crown of my head right there. Including this image of nine-day-old John Mellencamp. It's my ear, that's my neck, and that's my neck. So this thing was the size of a man's fist. You know, I'm 62 years old now. I just for the first time saw the growth of the back of my neck. And it was just like, why didn't you guys show this to me earlier? Yeah. Because I would have seen how lucky I am to even be here. Yeah. Well, what was it like to see that for the first time? It was like finding out that your uh, parents weren't your parents. Uh -huh. I mean, it was uh, really an epiphany moment for me. and. You know, you just couldn't thank the guy enough, and... Uh, By rights, you should be dead. Oh, sure, yeah. In 1951, John Mellencamp was one of three babies at Riley with spina bifida. They did three operations. One died on the table. Uh, another girl lived, I think, till she was 14, and then she died. And then me, so they ha basically cut my head off from here to here, laid it open, cut that thing off, and then put... Uh, put all the um, nerves into my spine. Dr. Heimberger's highly risky procedure took 18 hours. He charged my parents a dollar. A dollar? Yeah, he, they paid a dollar. Because? Well, because I was a guinea pig. Does that change the way you see yourself in any way? Um, yeah, it does. <laughs> The singer remembered walking down a New York street in the 1980s, the height of his success, when he was stopped by an older woman. And she said, you know how many angels you have around you? And I went, what? She goes, you are covered with protection. Now looking back on her saying that, seeing what I've seen, maybe I believe it. Well, um, a lot of songs in that, I would think. Well, I think there's already been a lot of songs. I just didn't know. Yeah. I just didn't know, you know, where they were coming. People up on the east side, people down gravel road. Mellencamp and the doctor who saved him 63 years ago sat together for about an hour last fall. And basically, we talked about faith. Right. And, and having, because I have very little faith in anything. He just kept grabbing my hand and saying, John, you need to find faith. It's so lucky you got to see him. I uh, 
trying to take his advice to heart. You are? Yeah, try to find faith in something. Imagine discovering that at 63 years old, not what you'd been through as, a, as an infant. Uh, it was so fortunate we got to meet that doctor, Dr. Heimberger, Dr. Robert Heimberger died just on June, this June 9th, so. That whole story just gives you chills. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, well, I mean, it clearly gave him chills too, which was, you know, what was so amazing about it. You could see that thoughtfulness in his writing too, even during the interview, mm -hmm. it's a great piece. Thanks. Coming up next.